Greetings from White Memorial. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about snake shedding, which scientists refer to as ectasis. It's basically the sloughing off of the top layer of skin. So when a snake sheds its skin, it's not the entire skin, it's the top layer of skin. And they basically do that because they outgrow that top layer. So by shedding off that layer of skin, it promotes further growth. And it also allows the snake to slough off any parasites that might be on that outer layer of skin. So it's a very important process for them. Uh, they shed their skin pretty regularly. The, the amount of shedding depends on how old the snake is and what kind of conditions it is in. So a younger snake is going to shed a lot more often than an older snake would. Gordon here is um, about two, two and a half years old. He's still growing fairly rapidly. He has not reached anywhere near his maximum length yet. So he sheds pretty regularly. Uh, he shed this skin just uh, a, few, a few weeks ago, and I believe he's almost in the process of shedding again. His, uh, his skin looks a little bit more dull than it normally would, and that's a called in the blue. And then eventually what we're gonna see is that his eyes will cloud over, and that's the true sign that a snake is about to shed. Then those eyes clear up for a few days, and that's right before the shedding happens. The actual shedding of the skin usually only takes between a half hour to an hour, um, but the, the process leading up to it can be several days to almost a week. What's pretty unique about a snake shedding its skin is that that outer layer all comes off in one piece. Every animal sheds its skin. We even shed our skin, but ours sheds in such small flakes that it's not really noticeable to us. Whereas when a snake sheds, it all comes off at one time. It usually starts to shed right around the mouth or the nose. So the snake will find a rough spot, either a rock or a tree branch, and they'll start to rub their face up against that rough spot, and that will break open the skin. And from there, the snake just moves along that rough spot, and the and the skin all comes off at one time. Here's a, here's a skin that was actually uh, from Gordon, but I laminated it to preserve it. And you can see that the entire length of the body is in one skin, even starting at the head. And what's really interesting, when you look closely, you can see that the eye scales also come off. So it is true that snakes do not have eyelids, but they do have scales over their eyes. And those scales come off with the rest of the shed when they shed their skin. Now this shed is from our corn snake, Corny. And you might notice that it's a pretty long shed. Any sheds that you have found in the wild, you might also notice, man, that looks like that was a long snake. And granted, it, it could have been a fairly long snake, but you also have to consider that the shed is always going to be longer than the actual snake. And that's because when the shed comes off, the skin from the top and bottom of each scale comes off. So it almost multiplies the length by two. So the snake shed that you find it is always going to be longer than the actual snake. It's basically like a stretched out skin. When a snake is about to shed, their eyes are covered uh, by a cloudy scale. Now that makes them feel a little bit more vulnerable because they can't see as well. And sometimes it might make the snake slightly more aggressive than it would be. So it's really important not to handle snakes uh, when, they're, when they're about to shed. That being said, it's not a great idea to handle any snakes in the wild because they're not used to being handled by people. I can handle Gordon with no problem because he's been in captivity long enough that he's used to being handled. But a wild snake is gonna think that you're a predator and its main defense is to bite. When you do come across a snake shed, there's something really interesting you can look at. If the tail happens to still be attached to the rest of the skin, you can look at the arrangement of the scales on the tail to find out if the shed was from a venomous or a non-venomous snake. Now, 99.9% .9 of the time, the sheds that you're gonna find are from non-venomous snakes. That's what we have the majority of around here. But we do have two types of venomous snakes in Connecticut, the timber rattlesnake and the uh, copperhead. And so there's a chance that you could c come across the shed of a venomous snake. The way that you would look is at the tail from the cloaca down. So that's basically from about here down. So the, the last scales on the tail. If you see two columns of scales from the cloaca down to the tip, so one column over on the left side and one column on the right side, then that is gonna be from a non-venomous snake. Whereas if there's only one column that goes straight down, so the scale goes straight across 
all the way down, then that is from a venomous snake. So just a fun fact when you find a shed on the ground. So if you're finding snake sheds on your property, then that's a pretty clear indicator that you do have snakes on your property, as most of us do, and that is not a bad thing. In fact, they are incredibly important for the ecosystem. They are your main rodent control on your property. So uh, snakes do a really good job eating small rodents. In fact, if you take the black rat snake, for instance, by eating just two rats, that prevents the birth of 1,500 more rats because that pair will reproduce and then those babies will reproduce and so on and so on and so on. Throughout the year, you get 1,500 rats. So uh, a black rat snake or any other snake is incredibly important for what it consumes in the ecosystem. Our general philosophy with wild animals is leave them in the wild. That's where they belong, that's where they want to be. In the case of Gordon, um, what happened to him was that he was found on our property with a pretty significant injury to his mouth and part of his body. We think he was either uh, run over by a lawnmower or stepped on by somebody. This was when he was just hatched out, so he was a very small snake at the time. Uh, we took him in uh, to try to make sure that he was eating. We had to force feed him for a while. By the time we were getting him to eat, uh, it was winter, and we had to keep him over the winter. And during that time, he just got pretty used to being around people, so uh, we decided to make him one of our education animals. Um, but in general, the best thing to do with an animal, if you find an injured animal, is to contact a wildlife rehabilitator. They can take care of the animal to the point where it can be released back into the wild, which is where it really wants to be. Because it's hot, do it everywhere.